As a first grade teacher, I'd like to say thank you to Heal the Bay for bringing joy to my students' education. I love to see my kids learn, and going to the aquarium is not only a great experience for them, uh, it's a great experience for me. It brings me back uh, to the, the wonder that kids have when they discover things and they learn more about their world. If you look around our school, you know, it's, it's a concrete jungle, so uh, any opportunity they can get to be out in, the, in nature and see wildlife, see habitats, you know, it's a whole different world. A lot of our kids don't have that opportunity. Going to the aquarium, um, really helps a lot in the classroom because after the, the trip they have a, a, a wealth of new vocabulary and a new experience they could draw upon to write a story about or to use descriptive words and uh, write a description of what they've seen or felt there. So being in a working class neighborhood like this, a lot of families don't have the access to go to the beach or go to the mountains. So it's very valuable to, uh, for Heal the Bay to provide this opportunity for the families. Thanks to Heal the Bay for taking my kids to the beach. We're really at a tipping point in terms of what's going on in the bay and what's going on in our ocean where if we just let it go, it will get worse. My feeling is that we are at a point where we need to actively continue to manage the bay as opposed to taking a hands-off approach and just assuming that things will get better on their own. Hilo Bay's done a great job of dealing with pollution issues in the Bay for sure. Just number one, educating the public. And there has been a, a you know, huge change in the water quality in the Bay over the last few decades. Anyone spends time in the Bay, you know that there's a lot of marine mammals in the Bay. It's a very productive habitat. And that means the opportunity for the fish stocks to rebound is very high because there's a lot of food for them to eat. The biggest difference that you see is that before there were very few fish and now there are more and more larger fish. So it's, it's essentially you can have a healthy kelp bed and not have very many fishes in it. And what we're seeing is a return to what we would envision as being a healthier system in terms of there are more kinds of fish and more larger fish. Heal the Bay is critical for moving this positive agenda forwards. Scientists only do so well at getting their message out. <laughs> However, having an organization that has that kind of outreach, that continues to push the agenda of, of cleaning up the environment and improving the health of the environment is critical because uh, otherwise it, it really doesn't happen. In 1997, from surfing in the water here, I almost died. Okay, I paddled out of Malibu, uh, caught a few waves, then all of a sudden I was surrounded by sewage. As soon as I got into the wet sand, I started throwing up. It was so oppressive. And yet, the next day I woke up with a 103 degree temperature. I was sick for three whole weeks. Two and a half, three months later, I had no idea that I would be fighting for my life for just surfing. I was in a hospital on my back in the ER and the doctor's telling me you could die today. I had a pacemaker put in my chest and told that my days are numbered. I'm just one of many, so don't think that I'm something that's out of the ordinary. I have friends that have died from the Malibu Creek. I'd like people to understand that uh, this was serious business back in the 90s. It's different now, though. a lot different. The latest thing that happened, the Malibu Lagoon Restoration Project, that has been nothing but the best thing for Malibu. And Heal the Bay was, was right there. They were the first persons there that said, this has to stop. So today I'd look at Heal the Bay's report card and I'd paddle out, get in the water. And I wouldn't be back if it wasn't for Heal the Bay.